Hello, this video is all about ore processing. This will hopefully be a shorter one after the 40 minute previous video. So crossroads ore processing, there's a bunch of ways to do it. We're going to cover the bait, pretty much every all of them in one video. So you have one central resource on how do I process my ores. So let's start with doubling. So there's pretty much two ways to double ores in crossroads. You can either run them through a millstone like this, do, do, do. where they're going to get ground into two dusts, two iron dust, and then the iron, the metal dust you can smelt into ingots, just in any old furnace. Uh, this also makes sand as a byproduct, which you might want to filter out, uh, or you'll end up with glass, which maybe you want glass. I don't know. The other way of, of uh, doubling ores is with a crucible. So if I put some an, uh, an iron ore in here, we're going to get two ingots worth of molten metal. Uh, so if we do this, molten metal gets made and is immediately cooled because I didn't put anything on here to stop that immediately going so I could show you what was happening. So let's do that again. All right, we made enough molten iron to make two ingots and that molten iron is gonna go to the fluid cooling chamber which is just going to cool it into ingots and release heat. Now, that releases actually quite a lot of heat, enough heat that you could actually use that to help melt more, um, more ore, uh, because the crucible needs to be kept very hot, needs to be kept above 1000 C, which uh, may be difficult to do, depending on what your setup is. Um, <clears throat> While well, the millstone with a smelter, you know, smelters can be heated with solar heating pretty easily and run with a wind turbine so that might be easier depending on depending uh, or tripling however is much more complicated now this is a very bad setup I made uh, for the, the spotlight it is terrible do not copy this one but let's get it heated up <laughs> So this setup has a lot of moving parts, figuratively and literally, and it all starts with this machine, which is a stamp mill. So the stamp mill is a rotary machine, which is quite unusual, and it's the first step in ore tripling. So to demonstrate what it does, I'm actually going to get one on its own and just hook it up to one of these million power sources I've set up earlier. Is this thing still <laughs> Okay, apparently it is. Um, yeah, the reason this setup melted before, by the way, is because I had more heating on it than cooling, and the Stirling engine doesn't actually consume. In case you're wondering, this is this is the Stirling engine setup I used in a previous in the previous video. The reason this melted is I had more heating than cooling, and the Stirling engine doesn't actually consume heat; it just moves it around. Um, so this inevitably melted. So we're just going to add a little more cooling so that that doesn't happen again. Because this is a terrific, uh, this is a terrific little setup. I'll, if it doesn't melt, just to demonstrate the stamp mill, because it's quite a lot of power and it gets pretty fast. And we've got lots of speeds available to us. <clears throat> so let's start on a pretty, f on a, one of the slower speeds, this, this one. Uh, So if I open this up, the stamp mill connects uh, on these two sides here with little holes. And we can see it stamping. So if I put a piece of ore in, let's pay attention to a, a few things. First of all, we have two progress bars. That's weird. <laughs> this machine has a time progress bar and a progress progress bar. So if once I put an ore in, timer is going to start ticking. And progress is going to start ticking and it spat out the ore again. And the progress bar didn't reset, but the time bar did. So what just happened? So that time, let me, let's break it down. That time bar runs regardless of whether this thing is powered or not. It's just, once you put something in, after a certain amount of time, it's gonna come out the output, okay? 
the, that gear progress bar is based on the speed it's spinning. So on this stamp mill, which has no power and zero speed, that gear, little gear progress bar doesn't move an inch. Here though, we saw it moved. And once time runs out and it spits out the output, it does not reset the progress. Now if I put an, another iron in, it's going to start ticking again. Time's going to run out before we finish, but we've made more progress. And now I'm going to put the, a third iron ore in, and the progress bar finished before the timer did. And that means it actually did the job. We actually got some iron grit. And we got three of it per ingot, uh, per ore even. So how does the stamp mill work? Well, the higher the speed, the faster that progress bar ticks up. So if I demonstrate that, this is, we're going to see it's going very fast. In fact, it's actually going faster than the timer. And the stamp mill won't process at all if there's anything in the output, so you just have to take that out uh, because it could spit out either an ore or a dust. So we have to spit that, take that out, and this thing can, of course, interact with hoppers. So if you want to process everything first time round, you need to keep this thing at a really high speed. You need to keep it above 8 radians a second, which is pretty fast in this mod. Uh, what you're normally going to have instead is you're probably running it on a lower speed like this where you're going to actually have to run the ores through it multiple times. So what you might want to do is set up a little filter on the output. Uh, remember sorting hoppers? That the essentials feature? This would be a pretty good thing to use them for. So if I were, for example, to do this just really quickly, and I'm just going to use item shifters, another uh, essentials feature, because it's convenient. <laughs> Let's say I put my ore in my filter. Hopefully you remember all this stuff from my essentials tutorial or you've used essentials before. Uh, what this is going to do is if I put some ore in, well, it didn't process. So it's going to go down here. It's going to it's going to go this way because, you know, it matches the iron ore filter and it's going to go back in and it's going to keep going back in until it's finally processed and it comes out the bottom hopper. Uh, there was a little ore in there from when I was still setting this up. This does actually work as a filter. So I've got to filter the output and keep reprocessing the ores and keep remashing them and regrinding them until I've actually fully done them into dust. Or grit, rather. Well, what can I do with this grit? Well, there's actually quite a lot of things. Uh, if you melt them into nuggets, you can... You not, not melt them, sorry. If you smelt them into nuggets, uh, you get seven nuggets each, which works out to 21 nuggets per ore. <clears throat> which is about roughly two and a half ingots per ore. So we've already done better than doubling, but it's not tripling, is it? So if we just wanted to smelt it, we get better than doubling, but we're not there yet. Also, you can smelt ore too. So if I didn't have this filter, it's not like this, and I just did this directly into a furnace. Uh, if a little ore slips through, right, if some unprocessed ore slips through, it's not going to jam up the system, it's going to smelt, it's just not as efficient. So if you're really confident that you can keep this thing fast enough that it processes in one go, you won't even need a filter, because even if it drops below, it's just a little bit of inefficiency, it won't jam the filter or anything. It won't jam up your furnace, uh, because you can still smelt the iron ore itself. <clears throat> But we want tripling. We're not here for times two and a half. We're not here for doubling, halving. That's not a word. So how do we process it better? Well, if we want to process it even better, we're going to need the next machine, which is a blast furnace. Sorry, an industrial blast furnace. The blast furnace is a vanilla thing, which is basically just another furnace. The industrial blast furnace is a crossroads machine. <clears throat> So let's look over here. This is another rotary machine. 
uh, it's a so a lot of rotary being involved here. It has a minimum speed. It will not work at all below 2.5 speed. 2.5 isn't super fast. Uh, it's slightly faster than what a wind turbine can do without gearing, but it's not super fast. But it won't run at all below that speed. And it doesn't use a lot of power. But it does use coal or charcoal. So this is a machine that uses both power and fuel. So we can run it on coal or we can run it on charcoal. <clears throat> This one I've got with coal, but it, it doesn't make a difference. So if I put some raw iron grit in here, it's going to do some stuff. So let me explain what it did by disconnecting all the pipes and breaking all the hoppers so you can see exactly what it's doing. I put one grit in. It made 144 molten iron and two slag. 144 molten iron millibuckets, that is one ingot. So we got one ingot of iron out of our one grit and we got three grit from one ore in the stamp mill, which means we've got ore tripling, because we can cool this into ingots. Also, we used a little bit of our coal, and we made two slag. So, one coal is equivalent to, or one charcoal works out to eight slag. So every time, you see this little black bar? That's our, we can call, let's call it the coal meter. <laughs> it's not what it is. You can see every time we process some, that little black bar drops a little bit. We have a little bit less. And once that runs out, we're going to need to we're going to consume another coal or charcoal. So let's just use it all up. <clears throat> do, do, do. It's going. It's almost done. Did I say? Okay, there we go. It's empty. It stopped running. It's going to consume another coal. So, one coal works out to eight points of that. Uh, sorry, 16 points of that, I'm misremembering. But every time we process, we use two points, and we make two slag. So, we use one point per slag. What is slag? Well, slag's a byproduct of this. Uh, you can use it to make concrete more efficiently. You can use it in place of bone meal. Like, you can literally use it as bone meal because it's a fertilizer. Do I have any plants? Uh, you can use it like bone meal. Take my word for it. Uh, there's a couple other uses for it, but it's it generally it's something you can completely do without. You don't really need it. But it has its uses. But we're spending coal or charcoal to make this slag, and it's not even that useful. Uh, let me connect up this pipe so that we can cool all of our molten iron in into ingots and get our triple metal. Wouldn't it be great if we could use less coal? Sure, we might get less slag because we're using less coal, but we don't actually use slag that much. It's not useful. It's got like a couple uses, but not many. And it would be great to use less coal or charcoal. Hey! There's an optional extra machine here, and in this setup, I actually used it. This is the ore cleanser. This is the next machine we're going to show off. <clears throat> so the ore cleanser, and the other cleanser machine we're going to show off is the water. You know what this sound is? This, this sudden silence? It's me realizing I forgot to do a machine in the last video. Ah, I missed a machine. I really, really meant to do a couple of machines in the last video that I did not do. <laughs> this video is going to be about ore processing and everything I forgot to do in the previous video. Right, I'm going to have to change the title of this. <laughs> Gosh darn it. Um, I forgot quite a few things, actually. Okay. <laughs> The ore cleanser uses steam. It's one of those machines that actually uses steam itself directly. And it and what we and it makes this byproduct called dirty water. Dirty water is a liquid, obviously. Well, it's more of a mud, but it's dirty water, nothing special. Um it doesn't use any power, it just uses steam and it makes dirty water. And you use this, uh, the grit, 
which we got from our stamp mill, and we put that in. This one's full of dirty water, so it's not actually going to run. Hold on. Half this for a reason. Okay. So how much dirty water is in this pipes? How long is it going to take? Okay. So every time we process grit, we're going to use some steam, and we're going to make some dirty water. And we also turn those that those those uh, th that dirty grit into clumps. Clumps are just as good as in a blast furnace as grit. We can process it the same exact way, but instead of using two carb two carbon points, aka one 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 like one eight one quarter of a coal per, and making two slag each. We use one carbon point, aka one, si one eighth of a coal, and make one slag each. So by washing our our grit, we use half as much coal. <clears throat> so what do we do with the dirty water? Because that's a byproduct, and we're using steam. So we can actually use a water centrifuge to make to make dirty water into distilled water. I need to now have an aside and explain what a water centrifuge is because I forgot to cover it in the previous video. And it's quite an important machine. Okay. So a so as you'll recall, I mentioned at length that while you could would would get distilled water by boiling water in the boiler and it would give you salt as a byproduct, it's not very easy to automate it that way. The automatic way of making lots of distilled water and salt is this machine, the water centrifuge. So, how does this machine work? It is another rotary machine, and it's a very strange one. Uh, I have called everything in this mod very strange so far, I think. You're just going to have to get used to it. Um, <clears throat> um, it's it's a it's got a quirk. So let me just put a hopper underneath so we can pull the outputs. And we're gonna need a tubes and tanks. So you put water in. You're gonna need a bucket. And so we put water in like this, and the pipes for the water go in the orange side, and we pipe out the red side, okay? So this machine is going to convert water into distilled water, one-to-one -one ratio, and it's going to make salt as it does it. But it's got rotary power, why isn't it running? It's got water, what, what's going on? Well, this machine needs to switch directions. It actually needs the spinning the, the gear direction to change. So every time the gear direction changes, it does one batch. It makes it makes one batch of distilled water and it makes one salt. So I am here manually changing this to the spin direction. But there's obviously you can do this automatically. Now it doesn't just need the direction to change, it needs the speed to get fast enough, so it only counts if the speed gets up to uh, 0.5, which isn't very fast at all, but still, it's a minimum. So obviously the automatic way to do this would be something like this over here. Remember this little uh, thing here, where every time it got a redstone signal, it switched the directions of the gearing? Right, so now it's it's now it's counterclockwise. Now it's clockwise. Now it's counterclockwise. Now more. Now it's clockwise, and so on. Imagine this thing. But put the water centrifuge there and hook it up, and that would be what we want. In fact, let me put a large gear on this, so we can actually see this a little bit better. See? So it keeps switching direction. So building something like that on the water centrifuge and maybe using a timer or some sort of redstone uh, circuit if you want to be clever would definitely be a good idea.
Um, <clears throat> anyway, now that we've come back from our water centrifuge, you can also use that to turn dirty water into clean water in the exact same way. So again, speed has to get to 0.5, direction has to keep changing. Uh, here we go, it's running. I've got literally one of those toggly things I showed off of earlier, uh, where, it, where it changes direction. This is a terrible circuit, please don't build this one. Keeps changing direction. Every time it changes direction, we make uh, we make one we clean a certain amount of the dirty water. And we also get a byproduct. So when we were cleaning normal water, we just got salt. When we clean dirty water, there's a whole bunch of things that can act we can actually get which you can see scrolling by now. Lots and lots of things. Some of which uh, are valuable, like gunpowder, and most of which are less so, like salt. The other interesting thing about the water centrifuge as a machine is most machines will stop when the output is full, and the water centrifuge won't. So even if you, if you fill up on like distilled water, and you don't care about distilled water, but you just want salt, you can keep running the water centrifuge and it'll just void the extra distilled water and keep making you salt. So this is an extra little setup you can add if you want to be more efficient uh, with your coal or charcoal and also get some byproducts that might be useful. Now I need to cover all the other machines I forgot in the last video of which there are a disturbing number. Rotary pump. Thank goodness this one's simple, because I am getting tired of talking. Let's just connect this up. Now, if you look at this, I've given it power and the screw's spinning, but nothing's happening. And there is a reason for this, is that this thing needs the gear spin to be in the positive direction. That's the thing about corkscrews and pumps. They only work one way, and the one in crossroads is no different. So I've intentionally hooked it up wrong so that I can now hook it up right. And what you're going to see is that the water gets sucked up and removed from the world. So this is a pump. It removes liquids. It can only work on liquids that are where the source is directly beneath them like this. Also, it's full now. Uh, the, it does actually collect the liquid, so I can pipe, uh, pipe that into a tank. Right, we're getting the, the water in here. It only works if the source is directly below it. Like, like this doesn't work because the source is over here. But if we make this an infinite water source, we've just got, you know, infinite water. It's a pump. It does pump things. Uh, there are things that we're going to cover in this video. It, that should be it. I'm going to do a separate video on uh, the dynamo, liquid fat, and test the coil. Uh, that should hopefully be a quick one. And that's also where, yeah, okay. So uh, that was a, a couple extra bonus topics in this video. So that's been ore processing and certain rotary machines I should have covered in the last video. Goodbye. <laughs>